Hey, welcome back to the channel. So I took that 2009 Mac Pro that I recently did a video on and added a few additional upgrades to it to see if it would improve the overall performance. The first thing I did was replace the 16 gigs of 1066 RAM with 64 gigs of 1333 RAM. I then took out the PCIe adapter with the SSD card on it and put in a new adapter with an NVMe drive on it. That's a 500 gigabyte NVMe drive. And the last thing I did was take out the AMD Radeon RX 470 and replace it with an RX 5700. So in this video, I'm gonna show you the before and after benchmarks on some synthetic benchmarking tools. And then I'm gonna talk about some video editing performance if there was any change. Then at the very end of the video, I'm gonna give you my opinion on if these upgrades are worth it and also if a 2009 or 2010 Mac Pro is worth buying in today's environment. So before I jump into these benchmarks, I just wanted to point out that when I did these benchmarks, I did several runs and then took the average of all those runs. So these are not the results of one, just one single run, but a good representation of what the score is over several runs of each of these benchmarks. So first up, we have Cinebench R20. And because this is primarily a CPU benchmarking tool now, uh, there wasn't really that much change because I didn't change the CPU in this case. Before these recent upgrades, we got a score of 3283. And after the upgrades, we got 3287, which basically is the same exact score. Next up is Geekbench. And we actually did see a little bit of improvement in this one, which I was kind of surprised by. Before these recent upgrades, we got a single core score of 638 and a multi-core score of 6035. After these upgrades, we got a single core score of 645, so that bumped up a little bit, and a multi-core score of 6226, so we had uh, about a 200-point jump in the multi-core score. Next up was Unigen in Heaven, and there was a pretty significant jump here, but that's not really a surprise because we put in a much faster video card and the faster RAM. That faster RAM does play a little bit of a part into this, even though it's primarily a graphics uh, benchmarking tool. So before the upgrade, we got a score of 1760, which with an average frames per second of about 70. And after the upgrades, we got a score of 2727 with an average frames per second of 108. So that's about a thousand point jump for that score. Like I said, that's really no surprise because the RX 5700 is a much more powerful GPU than the RX 470 is. So the last synthetic benchmark I ran was the disk speed test. And there's no surprise here, but it was a massive improvement from that SSD to the NVMe drive. With the SSD, we got a write speed of 132 with a read speed of 400 and with the NVMe drive we got a write speed of 1497 with a read speed of 1430 another thing i saw with the ssd drive was there a lot was a lot of fluctuation uh, with the speed it would drop way down and then come back up uh, with the nvme drive i didn't see any of that fluctuation so that's a pretty solid score and a massive improvement of that read and write speed of that storage all right since i talked a little bit about gaming in the original mac pro video i'm going to talk about it here just to see if there was any improvement and uh it's not as much as you might think. Uh, I'm going to start off with Subnautica first. Before the upgrades, we were getting an average uh, frames per second of 38. This is at 1080p on the lowest setting. After the upgrade, we got an average frames per second of 48. So we had about a 10 frame per second jump uh, with that new GPU and the, the RAM. Storage in this case wouldn't really impact it too much. Uh, I honestly was expecting a little bit larger jump than that, but 10 frames per second, I'll take it. So the next two, I was really surprised because there was really no change at all uh, from before the upgrade to after the upgrade. Uh, next up is Seven Days to Die, 1080p medium settings. Before the upgrade, we got about 52 frames per second. After the upgrade, we got 53 per frames per second. Basically the same score. I'm really surprised that the GPU and the memory really had no impact on this score at all, which is the same with the next one, which is Dying Light. Uh, before the upgrade, we got 57 frames per second. After the upgrade, we got 58 frames per second. So I'm kind of surprised, again, that those two didn't increase, and I'm surprised that Subnautica didn't increase more. I'm just going to chalk it up to the lack of optimization for macOS. I haven't tried any of these games in Windows on this machine, but the macOS version, there really wasn't that much change with these upgrades. All right, next thing I wanted to talk about was video editing. And in this case, there really wasn't that much of a change other than the exporting, which I'll get to in just a second. 
On these older machines, scrubbing through 4K footage is a little bit sluggish, and that's true on this machine. After the upgrade, it was a little bit smoother, but not as smooth as you're gonna get on a more recent machine. So as far as scrubbing through the footage, there really wasn't that much of a change. I did notice in DaVinci Resolve, sometimes when I would start playing the footage on the timeline, it would take like just a split second to get up to speed. After the upgrades, I didn't really see that. It was up to speed immediately. Uh, going through the transitions, it was smooth both before and after both in DaVinci Resolve and Final Cut Pro. I did notice that um, you could have a little bit more complex timeline with these upgrades than you could before, before you started seeing some slowing down. So there definitely was some improvement in that regard. Now where there was the biggest improvement is with the exporting. I ran the Bruce X benchmark in Final Cut Pro both before and after the upgrade. So before it took about 23 seconds to do the full export with the Bruce X benchmark. And with the upgrades doing that test again, it only took about 15 seconds. So shave roughly 10 seconds off of the export time. I may do some testing in the future with a little bit longer and more complex timeline, but this Bruce X benchmark gives a pretty good representation of the performance gain when you're rendering out the file. All right, so now let's talk about whether these upgrades were worth it. And for general computer use, just browsing the web, word processing, that kind of stuff, there's virtually no change. So these upgrades that I did for this video, if you're just using it for general use stuff, they're definitely not worth it. Uh, just stick with the way the machine is currently. If you're doing video production, audio production, you're gonna see some modest gains but nothing too crazy. Same with gaming. If you're gaming on your Mac in the native Mac OS uh, versions of your games, you're really not gonna see that much of an improvement in those either. So for the benchmarking and you know the, the application use and stuff like that, it's really not that much of an improvement. Where you will see a big improvement is anything that uh, uses a lot of I.O. to the disk, anything that you'd need masses of amounts of memory for above that 16 gigs that used to be in this machine, and anything that requires a higher level of graphic processing because of the better GPU. You're gonna see some changes in those, but those are a little bit hard to quantify uh, because those are usually buried in other processes. So it's hard to benchmark those things, but if you're using those kind of processes, you will see an improvement in this, but otherwise for the, most people, you're really not gonna see too much of a change. So now after using this machine for about a year, adding all kinds of upgrades to it, including the upgrades that I talked about in this video, would I recommend buying one of these in today's market? And for most people, I would have to say that answer is no. You'd probably be better off taking the money that you would spend on this machine, plus the upgrades, and putting that toward a used iMac or MacBook Pro, something along those lines, like 2016 or newer. Uh, I have a 2017 iMac, it's a base model, but it is upgradable. I'm actually gonna do a video on this uh, where I upgrade the CPU and the RAM and the hard drive in that machine as well. But those, some of those machines do have some upgradability. They have Thunderbolt 3, so you can add an external GPU. They're gonna have much longer support uh, from Apple for the hardware. The older Mac Pros, a lot of people use them and they absolutely love them and there's nothing wrong with that. If the machine works for you, that's great. If you have one of these, you know, before you sell it and go and buy a faster Mac, you can add some of those upgrades that I talked about. I, I have links down in the description to everything that I use to upgrade this machine. So give that a try before you buy another Mac. But if you're looking to get into the ecosystem, I would recommend buying something that's used that's a little bit newer, 2016 or newer, rather than going this route. Now, hopefully you found this video useful and informative. If you did, hit that thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed yet, please consider doing so. Uh, if you have any questions, leave them down in the comment section below, and I'll see you in the next video.